So let's go on. And he says here, uh, uh, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. That's pretty important that we get that thought. Next verse. Behold, I show you a mystery. Anywhere where God talks about a mystery and you start reading it, you better come very, very close, very slow to come to a decision about what you believe. Very slow when God is saying, I'm showing you a mystery. He says, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Now I want us to realize there's something special about being made immortal. Would we all agree that's something different than being made alive? Yes. Okay, immortal is something much different. Now remember what Jesus said and he told his disciples in 1 John 3, verse one and two, when he told them that you're gonna be sons of God and you're gonna be like me. And you'll see me as I am, because you'll be like me. Now. Make sure we understand. He's not told everyone that's going to be saved that statement. Okay? Understand, that's not what's promised to everyone. What's promised to those are immortality. Now, we're going to see a difference here. And it may be outside your box of what you presently believe. But I ask you, please, allow me to get through some of these thoughts. And we'll pick them up next week or next time we study. And don't just discount them. Just set them aside because it may be a little bit outside what you presently believe. Yes, sir. Immortality means you have life within yourself. We're told Yeshua had life within himself. Amen. And he has the power to grant it to his, his disciples. Amen. So, so we understand there's something different about being made immortal and then being made alive. If you would... Go to uh, uh, Revelation 20 and verse 6, and let's, let's, let's capitalize on this one thought that Will just brought up. Yes, sir. We, leave this, you know, we should be careful not to do what so many people will do, cutting out just a part of a scripture to prove something, and they could say, see, the dead will be raised in corruptible. All of them. The dead refers to all the dead. No, it doesn't. It refers, to context, the, it refers to the dead he's talking about. Yeah. In context, he's talking to the brethren in, in Corinthia, in Corinthia, and he mentions we will not all fall asleep. So he's talking about the dead of we. Those of us who die, we will be raised incorruptible. Some of them won't even have to die. Well, see, the trouble, the trouble people will get into is what I started to study with today. You read something, you think it applies to you. You read that and you think, well, I'm going to be raised incorrupt. I'm going to be immortal. Wait a minute. Not unless you are of the ones that he's referring to, you're not. Now understand, there are many other people that are going to have life in, in the kingdom. But you know what they're going to have to partake of that will keep them alive? The tree of life. The tree of life. Exactly what Adam and Eve had had they obeyed. Understand, they are not immortal. And I'll prove it to you from Scripture. They're made alive and they need a tree of life to partake of. Does Jesus Christ need the tree of life to, to live right now? Of course not. He's immortal. Life is within himself. Will those that are like him and see him as he is, those who become immortal, those we just read about in 1 Corinthians 15, will they need the tree of life? No. No way. They will not need the tree of life. They will be, have life within themselves because we see they are like Jesus. They see him as he is. He has life within himself. So will all firstborn sons and daughters. So let me go. Go to Revelation chapter 20 and look at verse 6. Look at verse 6. Revelation 20 and verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part. Now let's remember who we're talking about. In the first resurrection. The only resurrection we've talked about today, and the only one that everyone thinks they're a part of, is the first resurrection, 
the one spoken of in three main places, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, 1 Corinthians 15, 52 through 54, and Revelation chapter 11, verse 15 at the seventh trump. All of those are referring to the exact same event and they're referring to the event when Jesus comes and gets the first fruit, the firstborn sons of God, the priesthood, those who are going to rule and reign with him and be joint heirs and be like him. We must realize the Bible is clear for those who see. Now, look here in verse 6 of Revelation chapter 20. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. He's not just blessed, but he's also holy. On such the second death has no power. Why does the second death have no power? Because they are what? Immortal. They're immortal. They're just like Jesus Christ. And they will rule and reign with Christ for that thousand year reign. But brethren, this is not referring to the church. I know I'll get some stones thrown at me. That's not who he's talking to. He's talking to the Israel of God. He's talking to the first fruit, the firstborn sons. Yes, Will. Okay, let's look here. He says, but they shall be the priests of God. There he tells you who they are. They shall be the priests of God and of Christ, and they shall reign with him a thousand years. So, brethren, I want us to realize the group that we're talking about here, those that are going to be immortal, those that are going to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years, they are different. They're priests of God. Yes, they are. They're going to rule with Jesus Christ. So, brethren, but there are others that are going to be made alive. There are others who are going to have the tree of life to partake of and live forever. Go to Revelation chapter 2 and let's see who is the main group that's going to have the tree of life. Yes, Albie. But are these two groups you're, you're talking about, they both have, they both have eternal salvation. Yes. Exactly. They will they will have eternal life. Yes, 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 absolutely. Is that that's the goal, right? I mean not just yeah. That's no absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. See, we're all Baptists, and we just really didn't realize that we believe in eternal salvation. Let's go. Let's go, if you would, to Revelation chapter 2. Now, brethren, in Revelation chapter 2, we're talking about churches. Yes, Will? What's it coming? I said, just once it happens, yes, we believe in eternal salvation. <laughs> okay, that's right. We believe you can lose, go off course. Okay, but in Revelation chapter 2, I want us to know that this top, this year, chapter 2 and 3, is about what group of people? The churches. The churches. Yep. So let's make no mistake, Revelation 2 and 3, you can ask anybody that knows anything about their Bible, they will tell you Revelation 2 and 3 is about the churches. Now if you would look, if you would, in verse 7. Two. He that has, Revelation 2 and verse 7. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. So when you're in the church, you're doing all that you know to do. You're doing what the Apostle James says in James 4 verse 17, to him that is righteous, to him that is faithful, those that do all they know to do. And God says he is merciful, he is kind. And in Romans 4 verse 7 and 8, he does not impute sin. Isn't that awesome? We have a God that does not impute sin to people who do not know and understand, but yet they love God, they love Christ. So we don't judge others, but notice what he says. To him that overcomes, I'm going to give him something. Is I'm, Am I going to give him immortality? Am I going to give him immortal? Or am I going to give him the tree of life, which is in the midst of the garden? Brethren, I hope you get it. That indeed the churches, when they are given life, they are made alive and they are given the tree of life to partake of forever. Please, please get it. There's different groups. There's other groups. There's the, there's the wheat, brethren. There's the sheep. There's other groups. There's other sheep, not of this fold. Remember all the stories we've, we've given here before in studies? 
This study here ties them all together. I'm going to ask someone maybe to even type this and put it in a pamphlet or a booklet because this booklet here is going to have people to really turn their heads. Uh, we'll get a bunch of rocks too, I'm sure. Yes? I just want to throw this in for thought. Uh, I won't, won't talk about it too much, but it looks like the same ones are also in the great multitude in Revelation chapter 7 that would be after the first resurrection and would be in the, in the group that you're talking about. I, that, that you're 100% right. I mean, because, and that's a... It's those who come out of the tribulation. The great multitude is the church. Now, brethren, you'll be you'll be uh, not accepted very well if you tell people that. But I can <laughs> I can prove it to you from the scriptures if you'll give me time, some study. But it is the church. The church is the woman in Revelation chapter twelve, and I can show it to you from scripture. And so we need to realize there are many different groups. But who Christ is coming for? Please don't be offended. It's not the church. He's coming for the first fruit brothers that are going to rule and reign with him. You know, back when I was a young kid, we used to play cowboys and Indians. And the Indians, we always had a chief. But to have a chief, you also need what? Indians. Lots of Indians. Okay? And so we realize... When Jesus comes to rule the earth, he needs a priesthood, but he needs lots of people that someone can serve and be a priest over or a priest to, right? Everyone's not a priest. We sometimes think if you're a Christian, you're a priest because it talks about kings and priests in Revelation 5 and verse 10. But he's not referring to the church, brethren. He's referring to the first fruit priesthood. The firstborn priesthood is who he's referring to. If you would, uh, make me read my note here. Uh, the tree of life was, would have allowed Adam to live forever. The tree of life we see here in Revelation chapter 2 would allow the church to partake of it to live forever. The tree of life in Revelation chapter 20 and the white throne judgment allows those in the book of life to what? Live forever. So there's where we see it all coming together. If you would, let's turn to Revelation 20. This is a good place for us to close today. Uh, the, and uh, I got to the start of page two, but we will touch on it and hopefully it'll be a blessing to you. Revelation 20. In verse 5, it says, But the rest of the dead lived not again till the thousand years was finished. So let's, let's, let's accept something here. There's the first resurrection, which the first resurrection we just read in 1 Corinthians 15 are those who are going to be changed to immortal. And those are all of those who slept from the beginning of time, correct? Yes. Okay. All the righteous. The righteous ones that are that are part of not not no wait a minute let me rephrase it not all of the righteous all the righteous who are priests there's lots of people that did good things in their life and they'll be resurrected in the white throne judgment and given eternal life they'll give them, be given the tree of life to partake forever when you get into the first fruit the firstborn priesthood they've been planned from the foundation of the world that's what Ephesians one's all about that's what a first Peter one's all about. Well, that's the same people. No, it is 144,000. I'll show that to you too in this study when I get there. But here, we'll see here, the rest of the dead live not again to the thousand years were finished. So we got the first fruit, the firstborn, they're gonna rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. We got that, right? It's his priesthood. It's the first fruit. They're made immortal. They're not given a tree of life. They're made immortal. Then the thousand years is over with. We know then we have... Let's drop down due to time. Let's drop down to verse 12. And it said, I saw the dead, small and great, and stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those books which were written in the books. Now, notice that were written. 
It's not something that's added up when you're resurrected. Let's go through your, 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 your life unless you have a defense lawyer and see they can make excuses of why you did what you did. There is no defense lawyer at the white throne judgment. You're either in the book of life or, you're out, or you've been blotted out, one of the two. And so here he says here, and you're going to be judged according to your works. The works he's talking about there is not works for salvation. It's the works that you did and how you lived your life. Were you a good person? Were you decent? Were you stealing from your neighbors? Were you sleeping with your neighbor's wife? Were you doing all these evil things that brought about judgment upon your soul when you died? Or were you basically doing as good as you could? As good as you knew? That's where James 4, 17 comes in. To him that knows and does it not. I promise you, we're going to have people in the kingdom of God that's never kept the Sabbath and that's kept every pagan holiday that we keep. Oh, and, oh, and they're going to be there in the kingdom of oh, God. Did, uh, didn't have a chance to do any of that. And so absolutely. But go on here and we see here. And he says here uh, in verse 13, the sea gave up the dead, all these dead, and the grave gave up theirs. And uh, they were judged every man according to their works. And let me drop down to verse 15. Is, is that what you were paraphrasing there? Hell is the death or the grave? Is that it's a grave. Talking? Hell is the word Hades. It's, it's, not, it's not, as many Christians like to say, it's some, uh, some uh, hell, some uh, purgatory, purgatory kind of place. That's not what it is at all. It's the six by, uh, by four by six uh, graveside that you, they put us in. And he goes on to say here, the last verse, and whosoever was not found... This is what's important. See, our Christian brothers out there will all say that if you're in this resurrection, you're going to hell. Yeah. All the righteous was in the first resurrection. The Bible says no such thing. Who's coming, who he's coming for is the first fruit, the firstborn priesthood. Then we have Christ protecting the bride on the wings of an eagle yep. during the tribulation. They're protected, Revelation 12. They're protected. They're kept. Now remember, Satan goes after them. And what does, what does Satan do? He goes after them. And, and Jesus said, no, 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 no. He protects them on the wings of an eagle for a time and time and a half a time. For three and a half years, the church is protected. And then when he comes to get those that are his, and there's so many scriptures that prove this. Really, the parable of the tares and the wheat is one that proves it. And I can go in detail and show you at some point in time. But here we see here, it says those, those not found. It's interesting how it's had stated here. Those not found. That tells you that something happened. It also tells you there are people whose name is found. Is found. But those not found, and who's not found is those who've been blotted out. Yep. Now, trust me on this, guys. Revelation 3 and verse 5, Jesus says, I'll blot out who I want to blot out. Yep. So he is the judge. Jesus Christ is our judge. So here we see those not found in the book of life. I believe you go into the book of life at conception. At conception. Read Psalm 139. It's Psalm 139, as clear as can be, folks. It's when you are conceived in the womb. That's when he knows you. That's when he knows you. And if that's when life begins, we as Christians say life begins in the womb, right? Does life begin in the womb? If it begins in the womb, would you not go into the book when you are conceived? It says all your members are written there. Written there, yes, sir. I just, I, I can't help but think or ask, I mean, so are you not blotted out at the age of accountability when you sin and you decide you want to walk away from the Lord? No, no. You're not blotted out at that point. No way, no way. God gives you every opportunity to the day you die. The day, the moment, the moment. That's why it's this deathbed repentance is so awesome. That's how the thief on the cross made it in, folks. He wasn't a priest. He wasn't out there serving Jesus. You're only but he did acknowledge him as the son. He of acknowledged God. him as the son of God, and that he wanted to serve him when he made up his kingdom. And Jesus said, "I'm telling you today, you will be with me in paradise." What Jesus was saying in, in Revelation chapter 20 here, this dead, the small, and the great, the first one we're going to meet, the first one we're going to see there is a thief on the cross, and another one is Rahab the harlot. See, we take Rahab the harlot and make her, make her, uh, uh, make her a, a priest. Yeah. 
The Bible tells us no such thing. It says that she will be saved because she did good for those who belong to God. Brethren, read Matthew 25 and tell me on the nations, the nations that do good to those who serve Jesus. And they ask Jesus, what have they done? He said, if you've done this to the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me, folks. So please, the topic we're talking about is monumental. I can't cover it in, in weeks of study, but I want you to realize this came to me just recently. And God has put it in my heart. You've got to hear it and do your own study. But I'm telling you, God wants all to be saved. And he's made a way whereby people can be redeemed. Is everyone going to be a firstborn priest? Absolutely not. But there'll be many. Is everyone going to be the bride of Christ? Absolutely not. No, but you just said it too. It's not in his will that any should perish, but that all would That's why he puts everyone in the book of life at conception, my friend. You got to be blotted out to, to not be here at this point. In Revelation 20, and when the books are open and the white throne judgment takes place, you actually have to have been blotted out of the book of life to not be here. That's what Brother Dwayne said earlier. What about all the babies that are aborted or all the children that die? Guess where they're going to be? Right here. They're, they're in the book of life. They've never been blotted out because it didn't have a life that was deserving of being blotted out. Yes, sir. The great multitude in chapter 7 when he's leading them, the lamb is leading them to life, they still have tears in their eyes, so, and God wipes them away. So they, they, there's still something missing until he, because they had tears in their eyes. Uh, they, and they go to those living waters. When I get you the, when I get into this study, Dwayne, I, I think I can prove who they are. All right. And I'll give you a little hint. It, they were not. They were not sealed. Okay. If you'll notice, Revelation. I'm not talking about Revelation 744,000. They're the priesthood. It's a numeral multitude of every nation, every kindred, every tongue, and who that is, is the church. My friends, it is the church, and I'll prove it to you from Scripture. God bless you all.